Hello, everyone. Thanks for taking the time to join this webinar. My name is Vinay Atma. Currently, I'm the principal product manager in the Alexa team at Amazon. I really appreciate this opportunity from Product School to share some of the learnings and insights that I've built over the years as a product manager. Before we get into the details, a little bit about my background. I am based out of Silicon Valley, uh, San Francisco Bay Area. Like a lot of Silicon Valley PMs, I started my career as an engineer writing code in C and C++. And after I got my MBA from the local Santa Clara University, I transitioned into a product manager. Along the way, I founded two startups, the first one in the CRM space and the second one in the mobile space. I maintain a blog on WordPress where I try to frequently write about uh, technology, strategy, and life in general. Although uh, the frequency of my blogging has gone down ever since I joined Amazon about two and a half years ago. Like any other skill in life, I truly believe that product management is an acquired skill. It's something that you gain by deliberately practicing over and over again. We have to build and hone the skills over years. There are many, many aspects to being a good product manager. Today, I'd like to cover three aspects that I found to be super useful over the years. The first one is focusing more on what and why of building the products in addition to the mechanics of how you build the product. The second order thinking is meant to complement the first order thinking when it comes to building products. We will get more into the details in the coming slides. The third is watching and learning the, from the best products and companies out there. Most product managers that I see uh, out there spend a lot of time on the mechanics of building and launching features. This is uh, talking, to the, talking to the stakeholders, writing Jira stories, getting UX mocks developed, working with the engineers to schedule and slot them into sprints, figuring out the dependencies between the front end, the back end, and the other teams and other divisions within the company. This is what I call the how aspect of building the products. While that is good, I have noticed that PMs usually don't spend enough time on understanding the big picture of the business. Uh, this is what is the business problem that we're trying to address? What are the different customer segments that our business or our product has? Uh, this feature that we're building, does it affect one customer segment or all customer segment? What business impact does it drive for my company? Which KPIs does it move the needle on? By how much? Um, how much does this feature tie into the overall product strategy and priorities that the leadership has set for this year and maybe even for the next year? I think it's super important for product managers to spend some quality time learning and understanding the business aspect of what and why in addition to the pure mechanics of building and launching product features. To be honest, I have been guilty of this in the past where I spent more times in 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 the mechanics of building the product. But in the recent years, I've gotten much better at, at deep diving into the business aspect of, of product management. So how do you build the muscle on the business aspect of the, of, of the what and why of building products? Every company has some sort of business reviews, either at monthly or quarterly cadence. Try to attend those, those uh, QBRs or MBRs. Um, for whatever reason, if you cannot make it to those meetings, try to get access to those documents or, or, or uh, PowerPoint decks and try to go through them and, and get an understanding of the business issues and the business priorities and the overall business strategy that the leadership has set for, for your product or for your division. Try to bring this, this topic with your manager and see what sort of insights you can gain from your manager. This is also something that you can bring up with your skip manager. Now, if you don't set have uh, either monthly or, or uh, quarterly meetings with your skip, I highly recommend that you set up some uh, meetings with your skip manager. This one's an important one. Try to schedule one-on-one -on -one coffee and lunch meetings with the people on the business side of the house. These are your sales, marketing, legal, finance, or operations side of the house. 
try to get insights into the challenges that these uh, stakeholders face when they're running the, the product and the business. Uh, when you first set these meetings, uh, your meetings may not be super smooth, they may not be successful, but over time, as you get to know these people well, and as you build trust uh, with these people, you will get more and more useful insights from these people. Just like we are less aware on the business side of the house, these people are less aware on the product side of the house. Give them those insights, uh, help them and educate and understand the product side of these things so that uh, eventually these meetings become beneficial both for you and the other people. And, and in the process, you develop this symbiotic relationship with these people. Now, in these COVID times, setting up uh, either coffees or lunches is not that easy and it's a bit of a challenge, but you gotta figure out a way to do this uh, virtually one way or another. Last but not the least, if your uh, company is a public company, try to take some time to go through the SEC filings. There's a lot of useful insights that you can glean from going through these, through these documents. Uh, it, it takes a bit of an effort, but I found that in, in the long term, it really is useful for you to go through these documents and, and get these business insights. So what do you do by doing all these things? As you spend time on, on, on doing these things over a period of time, you organically develop a much better understanding of this business. And this understanding not only helps you identify new business problems to solve for your business and for your customers, and it also helps you incorporate those, those insights into your roadmap. And it also helps you prioritize the roadmap in terms of initiatives which you need to execute sooner than later versus which initiatives you can postpone for a later date. One of the hard problems that we as product managers face is that we get a lot of requests from our business stakeholders to get this or that done. On the other hand, we have limited engineering resources in terms of what we can get done. So we have a hard challenge of what do we say yes to and what do we say no to. Now, if you have a good understanding of the overall business, the strategy and the priorities that have been set at the leadership or the VP or the CEO level, this really helps us with the prioritization and the rationalization of the roadmap. It really becomes easy for you to have the conversation with the stakeholder to say, look guys, this is what we are going to prioritize for the next six months or 12 months. And here are the priorities that we're gonna drop because uh, this is what I'm hearing as a prioritization from my uh, VP and my leadership. It, it really helps you to say no in a, in a, in a rational uh, manner. By speaking the business language as opposed to the product language, you will be seen as a much more credible business leader and not just a product leader who talks about features and products. Overall, in my experience, I would say that building an understanding of the business will help you develop a much better product and drive a more meaningful business impact for your company. Shifting gears, so what is second and the nth order of thinking? How is it different from the first order of thinking? As product managers, our primary job is to identify problems and solve them for our customers. With first order thinking, we start with a problem first. We identify a solution and build that solution into the product and launch it. Um, first order thinking can be characterized as simple or sometimes superficial thinking. Uh, of or the understanding of the problem uh, at hand. More often than not, with first order thinking, the tendency is to go with the first solution that comes to my mind and take a quick and an easy path. On the other hand, with the second and the nth order thinking, the approach is to deep dive into the problem and understand it in the context of the overall business strategy and priorities. With second order thinking, you understand the stated and the unstated needs of the customer and the overall business. With second order thinking, you deep dive into the problem and try to, you try to come up with multiple solutions for the same problem and you evaluate the pros and cons of each option. You apply critical thinking to evaluate these options. Which one of these options cause the least problems? How do these options impact my overall product ecosystems? Are these options extensible? Meaning can I build upon it in future? Or am I hitting a dead end? 
what is the cost of building this feature what is the cost of maintaining it on an ongoing basis is the particular option more error prone uh, how does this impact cost uh, how does this intersect with the overall architecture we have for the product how does it impact the overall performance of the product these are all the things, sort of things that you consider as a part of your your second and the nth order of thinking Often we try to do uh, brainstorming with with the teams that we work with. However, what I realized over years is that for hard problems, team brainstorming is not enough. For tough problems, uh, I usually spend hours and even days thinking about in the background. Sometimes I go on long walks while I think about these problems. While first order thinking is about solving the problems relatively quickly and and launching the problems uh, the solutions to the market second order thinking is characterized by taking the time and effort to solve the problems while considering all the options and outcomes to be clear second order thinking is not about analysis paralysis there are simple problems for which you can certainly apply first order thinking on the other hand when you work on more complex problems it becomes really important for us to apply second order thinking over a period of time as you apply your second order thinking muscle you will organically develop a sense of when to apply first order thinking and when to apply the second or the nth order thinking and what i realize is that with second order thinking because you do a deep dive of the problems to understand the stated and the unstated needs of the customers and you have evaluated a range of options before you chose an optimal solution for execution there's a higher likelihood of of you delivering a more sophisticated product that that delivers um user delight for your customers and in the process you avoid any mistakes uh, along the way okay as a pm you spent a lot of time understanding the what and the why of the business you applied second order thinking to build and launch great products now how do you know that the feature that you uh, built will generate user delight how do you know that the the your customers will adopt your product over your competition's product the reality is this if you're building products in the b2b space your customers are the kind of people who will use products like microsoft office google chrome salesforce.com jira confluence slack sharepoint microsoft team or any number of such products on a daily basis on the other hand if you're launching a b2c mobile product your customers are the kind that will use facebook whatsapp tiktok twitter instagram etc the reality is this your customers will consciously or subconsciously compare your product experiences with these products in some shape or form what i've realized is that these successful products define the baseline experiences in that product space given that as a pm why should we not learn from these successful products whether it's b2b or b2c these products are successful for a reason they offer great product experiences and they solve the customer problems in a compelling manner i think as a pms there is opportunity for us to learn a lot from these products and hence watch and learn so how do you learn from these products whether it's a b2b or a b2c product whether it's a desktop web or mobile application pick your favorite product and do a deep dive to understand the different features of the product this one's my favorite one block off your calendar for a, for uh, an hour once a week to do a product deep dive on any product that you use on an ongoing basis over the years i've done many deep dives on on many such products and features for example uh, jira is a product that we uh, a lot of us pms use on an ongoing basis now jira has done a fantastic job with their product uh, and powerful dashboards their dashboards are great because their dashboards are built on the powerful filters now their filters are powerful because they are built on jql the jira query language where in addition to the fields you can also build use a lot of built in functions like uh, current user or or date range capabilities and such um 
Another great product which I have a lot of admiration for is Microsoft Outlook. Now, Outlook has a lot of uh, great search capabilities where you can search for your email or calendar objects by the sender, by subject, by attachments, and by the time frames over which the emails were sent and so on and so forth. You can also restrict the search to different folders and other such properties. Another feature that I love with an Outlook is the rules engine. You can create a lot of powerful rules to automatically handle the barrage of emails that we get on a daily basis. Uh, Outlook rules engine is super powerful because it allows you to create a flexible set of rules based on the metadata that is associated with each email or calendar item that comes into your inbox. Uh, it'll be useful for you to understand these sort of things. Uh, while we're talking about Microsoft Office, uh, another favorite feature of mine uh, is uh, Excel pivot charts. When you analyze a large set of data, the pivot tables and pivot charts are super useful for you to slice and dice the data in a dozen different ways. The mobile communications app, WhatsApp, has uh, done a good job of allowing you to manage the storage it consumes. In the settings, it shows the space consumed by different groups of which I'm a part of. Now, uh, we all get a lot of messages and videos on uh, WhatsApp. Uh, because videos take up a lot of storage space, every couple of months, I spent 10 minutes to delete the videos from different groups and recreate my storage on the iPhone. And WhatsApp makes it super easy for you to identify which groups consume a lot of space and makes it easy for you to delete these videos and reclaim your storage. Again, these are all examples of how different products offer different compelling user experiences to, to solve their customer problems. Over a period of time, as you do different product deep dives, you will organically develop a sense of what separate, uh, separates great products from average products. You will also be able to incorporate some of these insights and design uh, patterns and practices into your own products and deliver user delight. As an added bonus, uh, by deep diving into these products, you will also become a power user of these products and that will improve the personal productivity uh, when you start using these products. To summarize and bring it all together. As product managers, we have one job and one job only. Build great products, solve customer problems, and deliver business impact. To do that as PMs, first, we need to focus on the what and why to gain a deeper understanding of a business in addition to the mechanics of building and launching features for the products that we manage. We need to practice the second order thinking by deeply uh, diving into the problems and solutions that we work on. Third, we have an opportunity as product managers to watch and learn from other successful products and incorporate those learnings into the products we build. Thank you for taking the time to watch this webinar and I sincerely hope that you gained a few insights from this session. Feel free to connect with me via email uh, or via LinkedIn. My email is vinay underscore atma at yahoo.com. Thank you and have a rest of your wonderful day.